All right, people. Windows is no longer your friend. Windows is no longer a tool. It is now a weapon being used against you. And here's why you should switch over to Linux. Now, why do I say that Windows is no longer a tool, but a weapon being used against you? Because let's take a look at a few things. They are constantly shoving Microsoft Edge, which is basically borderline spyware at this point because it tracks all of your data, your search history, and has access to all of your login information. So if, so if like a data breach happens or something, bad actors can get a hold of all of your information and log in, steal your banking information. I'm not saying that other browsers are more secure, but I don't wanna have all of my eggs in one basket. There are ads absolutely everywhere all over the operating system. You pull up the start menu, there's ads in the, in the start menu when you're just looking for a certain program or trying to find a file, boom, there's ads everywhere. It is constantly reminding you to sign up for OneDrive so that all of your files and data and everything can be hosted by Microsoft on the OneDrive. But I don't like having my all of my data stored on someone else's computer and potentially them having full access to it when it's none of their business. And also, if you all remember back in the day, during the Windows 7 era and before, uh, you would get Microsoft Office for free. It came with the operating system and you could use it as much as you wanted and you didn't have to sign in to any specific thing. You didn't have to pay for anything. It just came with the operating system when you bought the computer. Now it's a subscription service and you can't access it without having one, a Microsoft account and paying X amount per month or per year to use it. Yeah, Microsoft is basically just milking you for every single dime, potentially, that they can get out of you because they're just greedy. Now, some of you may, may be aware of my last couple videos or so that I talked about I work for a local IT company and we also do a lot of uh, computer recycling and everything. I'm kind of the main guy that kind of handles that. Whereas we get old computers from old clients of ours and we try to repurpose them and resell them so that they can still re be remain in use if they're still, you know, new enough to be, uh, to be able to be used. So we would take all the, we would take the old hard drive or the SSD or whatever, you know, dispose of it properly. And then we would get a new one and install windows 11 on it. Now, for those of you that have, have gone through the out of the box experience with Windows 11, you're setting it up and everything. If you bought a new computer, um, you have to go through and select a certain number of things and then it tells you to sign in. You have to uh, sign into your Microsoft account. Then you have to connect your computer to the internet so that it can get updates and all this nonsense, which takes absolutely forever. Um, but people have found workarounds of you can, uh, if you press Shift F10, uh, and you type in uh, a certain command and everything and allows you to skip certain portions of that startup. This allows you to get straight to the desktop and then you can basically set up what's called a local account where Microsoft has no access to your computer and it's just yours. Because if you have a Microsoft account connected to that computer, Microsoft has basically full access to your computer and can look at your data, your pictures, your videos, your, your search history of anything that you've used on the computer. They have basically full access to it and you're basically allowing them to peek through your window. I don't know about you, but that kind of concerns me. I don't want some trillion dollar corporation being able to look inside my computer and be like, hmm, what's this guy up to? It's none of their damn business. You know, would you just hand your phone to a stranger with it unlocked and saying, Feel free to look at all of my personal stuff. It's none of their business. Now, recently, within the last uh, week or so, Windows has now uh, put out some updates for Windows 11 that doesn't allow folks like myself or people that, that don't want to set up with a Windows account, uh, doesn't allow us to bypass that, that portion of the setup to where you can set up as a local account. They're basically blocking all ability to set up Windows 11 as a as a simple local account. They are they are forcing you to sign in or create a Microsoft account uh, to where again, like I said, they have full access to your computer and they can do and see whatever they want. This is just a major red flag of them trying to exert more and more control over the populace. Since so many people are so used to using Windows on a regular basis, whether it be for work or home or play or whatever, that they feel that they have the right to do whatever they want with their operating system. And the problem is, is that people just say, oh, well, it's convenient because this is what I use. This is what I'm familiar with. Everybody uses it. It works, blah, blah, blah. But I think that's kind of a cop out of saying of just being lazy. 
in the sense of you're just allowing a big corporation to basically do all the thinking for you and basically have total control over your entire computing operations. I would highly encourage you to not just sit by and comply. You need to be your own advocate and stand up for your rights and not allow these big corporations to just bully you into or force you for that matter into conforming to what they want and doing whatever they want. You do have options out there. And this is why I encourage you all to take a look into Linux. It is not as scary as a lot of people think. Um, some people have never even heard of it. I'll spare you the long history lesson, but basically it is a, it is a much more privacy friendly uh, opportunity for those of you that uh, want to get away from the Windows ecosystem. And here's why you should, because Linux is free and open source. It works. It can be used for so many different things. And within the last, let's say five, five to 10 years or so, Linux has become a huge competitor against Apple and now Microsoft in the sense that more programs work with Linux or on Linux than don't. Think of, think of how you use your computer. Do you use it for work? Do you use it for home? What do you use on it? What do you use it for? Do you store photos? Do you store videos? Do you create videos on it? Um, do you use it for mu uh, music production? Um, do you do it for simple office work? Where you're creating just like Excel spreadsheets, you're creating PowerPoints for school, you're writing papers for school, you know, or are you simply just doing everything on the web? All that can be done in Linux as well. And here's the cool point, it's all free. Because Linux is free and open source to where that you, if you're savvy enough, can look at the source code of the entire operating system and change and mess with whatever you want. And if you're not as quite as savvy like me, I'm more of an end user than anything. And I use the operating system as it's given to me. Yeah, I've tweaked a few things here and there, but I basically use it as is. You can use what's called the package manager. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's basically an app store. And yes, Linux came up with the concept of app stores long before Apple or Google Play did. Basically, you go into the package manager and you find the program that you're looking for. You hit install and it sends a code off to the internet, finds the program of its latest updates for your specific operating system and installs it just like that. No hunting down websites, no, no using drop down menus for finding your specific operating system or your version or finding the proper download. Just one simple click and it's yours. Now, here's the really cool thing about Linux is that, like I said, that it's free and open source and you, if you're tech savvy enough, can look at the source code and see what's going in and out of your computer. And the folks that have developed many of the different distros for Linux and everything want nothing to do with your data. They are simply creating an operating system to be used as a tool and, and that only. So privacy is of utmost importance to them. And here's also the great thing about Linux is that it is completely free to use. All you gotta do is go to the specific website for that, for that specific distro, click download, download it to your computer, use a flash drive, flash it to that drive, put it into the new computer and install it. It's as simple as that. Now, if you're interested in learning how to do that, I will create a very specific video of how to install Linux Mint, which is the distro of my choice, which I find the most simple to use. It is very beginner friendly. It looks very similar to Windows and has a very, a very similar layout and, and style. And I've been using Linux Mint for years and I've had zero issues with it. Now, while using Linux, there are a few things you may have to give up. Now, if you're a huge gamer, gaming has actually become extremely useful on Linux. I primarily game on Linux these days. More games work on Linux than don't actually work. And if you're curious about any of your games, whether they work or don't on Linux, feel free to look up ProtonDB, type in the game that you play the most, and see if it works. They all come with a very specific rating of, of how well they work or if they don't. Like very specific games that uh, have to use like an anti-cheat, like uh, like Call of Duty Warzone, Battlefield, Valorant, these, these kind of arena uh, PVP shooters and stuff like that. A lot of those do not work on Linux and it's not because the game developers choose not to or Linux chooses not to. It's the anti-cheat software that doesn't work on Linux. So the game can potentially run if you're wanting to do like the campaign or something like that. Those will work on Linux. But if you get into those arena shooters where it says online PVP action, I'm sorry, but that's just not going to happen. Now, if you're a PC gamer and you use Steam, most of your games will work as long as you're using some version of Proton. 
Now, let's say you're a video creator like myself. You want to create videos while working on while working on Linux. Well, I'm sorry to say that the Adobe software does not work on Linux. However, there are many alternatives that you could use, such as DaVinci Resolve, which, which is considered to be an industry standard, just like Adobe Premiere. So even though you may have a very niche and very specific type of software that you have to use, whether it be for work, college, uh, or just play or whatever, there are alternatives if that specific software does not work on Linux. There are plenty of workarounds for almost anything. So again, I would highly encourage you to not just sit idly by and let Windows take over your entire computing operations and to stand up and take back control over your personal devices and use it as you see fit because it's your own personal device. Again, if you're interested in learning how to install something like Linux Mint, I'll create a separate video for that that shows you a step-by-step -step guide of how to download it from the web and install it on a new computer. Thank you all for watching. And again, remember, Windows is not a tool anymore. It is a weapon used against you.